was so excited to talk about this. I was really scrambling around trying to find my Superman t-shirt because I wanted to talk about this wearing man. I, I feel like I was like frozen from The Incredibles. Where's my super shirt? Come on, woman. I got to get online. I got to talk about Henry Cavill. You know, so there's my uh, Samuel L. Jackson, by the way, you know. You know, so just in case if I uh, do some voice acting out there. But look, people are going nuts right now about what the uh, the news that, that just came out about Henry Cavill possibly returning as Superman. Now, nothing is set in stone, but there are things are happening and there's things in the work right now. So what does it mean for this kind of announcement happening at this point in time? Well, it means that Superman isn't going to make an appearance in Wonder Woman uh, 1984 because that's been that's pretty much wrapped um, in the, the next couple of movies. The Batman is not happening. Um if they do move forward and, uh, and and go along with this new Batman, will they introduce uh, Robert Pattinson into the DCEU with everybody else? I'm assuming so. I hope so. And uh, maybe they can acknowledge it. Maybe Flash should be the one to be like, you look there's something different about you. That would be kind of funny. But I'm thinking what Warner Brothers is trying to do, especially with the new CW show coming out and whatnot, they probably heard the fans uh, talk about, especially if you listen to John Campion talk about how they've been – kind of uh, insulting and belittling uh, the Man of Steel over the years with uh, making him like a side note, a side character, or something that can be easily defeated and needs the help of a, another super, uh, superhero to step in. And it's been kind of insulting to the image of Superman. And with a guy like Henry Cavill, who embodies the, the, the costume so well, and he's the most muscular, masculine uh, looking and, and big Superman that we've, we've ever had, it just it just seems weird. I mean, look how powerful he proved he, he was in the Man of Steel and what he could do in Justice League. I've been rewatching Justice. Uh, I watched uh, Batman versus Superman again uh, last night, and I got I, mean, I just don't get what people's um, negative reactions were to uh, Man of Steel. It had to be one of the best, if not the best, origin superhero story ever ever put to uh, film. And then Batman versus Superman, because of what, one word, Martha? But when you watch the unedited version of it, it flows better and makes more sense. The theater, theatrical cut really took too much out, and it, didn't, it made the movie too jarring. Um, but Batman versus Superman, which technically could be considered Man of Steel 2, was a great follow-up. Introducing Batman and introducing um, Wonder Woman. So Batman v Superman was a great movie. Justice League, yeah, it did have its problems. I mean, figuring, feeling that they had to go the comedic route to, I don't know, to, to change things up or to catch up with Marvel. Maybe that's what the reason was. But, but the, the tone that they set, the most serious tone, I like that. It set the world, it set the two movie companies apart because Marvel was pretty much doing almost everything, anything, everything with all genres, horror, action. Uh, sci-fi stuff, um, spy uh, spy thrillers and things like that, all kinds of genres. That's that's what, that's what their niche niche was. We're going to do comic book movies, but they're going to be in the vein of as many genres as we can fit into this. And that's not just one way to tell a story. But Warner Brothers was like, Seri- we're going to try to make this as dark and serious as possible if this was happening in the real world. And that I liked. It made it feel like, like, like it was... Marvel was uh, comic book movies brought to life, but DCEU was like, if these characters were here in our world, how would would, how would the world uh, be? That and that's what I liked about both sides. Um, and then I feel like DCU kind of was losing their way with uh, Suicide Squad and and um, and Justice League, and then it just started all tapering out. They should have just stayed consistent. But what, what's going on with Man of Steel? To me, it's almost like it's similar to what was going on with uh, Star Wars. You don't appreciate, I know there's a fandom out there, but y'all don't appreciate nothing until it's gone or until something else comes out. You ain't appreciate, uh, <laughs> um, what's his name, uh, Batfleck until oh, Twilight Boy was cast. And you don't appreciate Man of Steel and Batman v Superman because y'all were taking for granted that there was more coming until it stopped. And it was like, well, we don't know if we're going to bring Henry Cavill back. And then now all of a sudden it's like, oh, release the Snyder Cut of Justice League, a movie you didn't like. A lot of y'all uh, panned it. And it had its problems. It didn't stay consistent with the tone. Now, now, for me, my problem with it was 
it didn't stay cons- they obviously didn't have a plan like from green lantern to man of steel to which which is it going to launch this dceu universe then they stuck they were like okay it's man of steel that's going to start it all off and to what and it, and it, it should have stayed with that tone because i feel like wonder woman stayed with that tone i felt like um batman v superman stayed with that tone and then it's, it was like Suicide Squad was like, let's kind of break away from it. And Justice League, let's really try to break away from it and see what happens. Maybe it will, maybe it won't work. But I feel like that's what jarred people more than anything else. And that's subconsciously why a lot of y'all are like, I don't like this and I don't like that. Because look at what, how, Man of Steel, how serious Man of Steel was in comparison to how Justice League was. Now, forget the mustache stuff. I mean, for real. Look how look how the tone was totally. You can tell that uh, that everything shifted from this side to that side in tone. And that's what it was. But then it was like, OK, but now we can get this Snyder cut. Maybe we can get back on the, that same path, uh, that same tone. Right. From Josh Whedon to the Snyder version of it. Right. Maybe we can uh, get that back. And maybe moving forward, that's what it will feel like, because. Aquaman is an anomaly on its own. It, it had that comedic and that adventurous and that fun. It felt more like an MCU movie than any of the other DC movie, um, or movies did. But it, it works for him because that works for Aquaman's personality that, that we got. It doesn't work for a Batman or a Wonder Woman or a Henry Cavill Superman, but it works for that actor. It just works. Because, I mean, even in the comic book, uh, in the cartoons, really, outrageous. I mean, Aquaman has been taken not that seriously for years. So it, it's, a, it's funny to play on that. But with what can we do with Man of Steel moving forward? Well, I, I think originally the plan was to have Ben Affleck's Batman do all these cameos and to thread all these movies together with Batman being the one thing that you were going to consistently see throughout all these movies. Until it, you know, Ben Affleck, you know, got tired of it and 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 went and went out of it. So they stopped that. I think they're gonna pick it back up, and hopefully do it with Henry Cavill, because you can't really do it with Wonder Woman or Aquaman, really. But Superman can be everywhere. It makes kind of makes more sense to do it with Superman. You already had a Man of Steel movie, and then if you have him cameo kind of with the suit on Shazam, and then again an Aquaman two. Or all these other upcoming uh, movies. Maybe he can come in and uh, Black uh, Black Adam if he's in Shazam 2. If they make Shazam 2, since you've already featured his costume, Shazam 2 should be Henry. Uh, that like that like that Shazam movie cartoon movie that we saw with Black Adam versus Shazam versus Superman. That's what it should be. It should be mostly about um, Billy Batson trying to learn from the best his new bestie on how to to really you know to learn learn from the man the super the superman uh, uh, who else better than to uh to to train him to teach him and when when the uh the the struggle really uh, gets you know big maybe at the end of the movie maybe uh but by the middle of the movie superman would have to go away to do something you know that that's big and and then shazam is caught off off guard with uh, uh black adam for a while as long as they don't try to make it seem like you got this obi-wan kenobi uh Luke Skywalker situation happening and then Darth Vader just totally comes in and, and kills Obi-Wan Kenobi being Superman and knocks him out for a while and then Shazam has to be the one to to do what Superman couldn't do as long as they don't do something like that you can bring Superman in either in the beginning and then he's gone and train him for a little while and then, now you got it it's up to you I got to do something else or have him surprise you coming in at the end uh, and saving and helping Shazam save the day, but don't take anything away from Shazam, but definitely don't take anything away from Superman, because if if I don't care how powerful Black Adam is, if I had a choice between uh, Shazam and and anybody else, I'm, I'm Superman. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose Superman. I'm like anybody. The answer is always gonna be Superman. Superman needs to come in. Oh, you can't fix it. Get call Superman. So I'm going. Oh, what's going on? If Thanos is coming, call Superman. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. That's, I mean, because he is the quintess- he is the quintessential superhero. So you shouldn't have to make Superman look bad to 
promote another superhero. It just doesn't work that way. Not with Superman. And that's what Warner Brothers has been doing wrong. And that's what they need to stop doing. So Shazam, Black Adam, whatever the situation is. Um, I think I think that makes I think that makes sense. Um, having Superman be the uh, a, a key figure or it or at least a cameo a little bit more than a cameo in each one of these movies maybe he can then be the thread the weave together all these uh upcoming future dc movies and then when it's time to bring, bring batman back into the fold again maybe at the maybe the second or the third batman movie with pattinson uh after he works out uh then you can get henry cavill to introduce you know go you know meet up with uh, Batman again and don't even talk about it. Let him be the same Batman. Yes. I mean, we fought and we're friends now, justice league and all that stuff. And just not mention the fact that he's played by a totally different character. Just keep moving forward with him being Ben Affleck's uh, Batman, but in a different suit, you can, you know, you can wear a different suit. They always wear different suits. It's all good, but I'm excited about it, man. I'm, I'm happy. If it isn't Ben Affleck, then it should be Henry Cavill. That it just makes sense. And, when we get back to a possible Justice League 2, I feel, like I said before, I, don't, I feel like they've learned the, the, their lesson. I don't think they're going to make the same mistakes. And it's going to be a lot of fun, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait. I think this is the best news uh, that Warner Brothers, they're riding that wave. The launch of, of HBO Max has got, came off to a bumpy little start. Um, a lot of people are upset with it. But the Snyder Cut to uh, what, what else can, is, is possible in the future? Sky's the limit now, man. That's how I, I hope Henry Cavill and Warner Brothers makes this deal happen. I'm looking forward to it. Put it in the box below. Let me know what you guys think. Are you happy about Henry Cavill possibly coming back as Man of Steel and a future uh, Man of Steel uh, movie? And especially with these, what about my idea about these cameos? Let's see if that can uh, make that happen and do uh, for the DCEU what they were trying to do with uh, Batman. Or maybe they should do that with a different character, with a different character in every uh, so many movies. And then maybe then flat. The three characters I think it works best for is Batman, which they've already done a few movies with him cameo in superman and flash those are the three that it just makes the most sense when you talk about cameos a lot of heavy cameos as far because they're the ones that can get around let me know what you guys think guys put it in the box below and until next time guys hey peace <laughs> i've just been invited to sundance i've been doing movie reviews for a while now on youtube and my blog for the past couple of years, I just, all I do is I talk movies, talking through the media. We were invited. I, I